Hey guys, it's Howard here with Sci-Fi Explain, and I was lucky enough to be able to sit down and have an online chat with Andrew E.C. Gaska. I talked about him in a recent video on Alien Universe Canon after reading through his work on the award-winning Alien role-playing game. He saw the video, gave an invitation for an interview, and here we are. To be upfront, this was my first of any kind of interview, and I was crazy nervous and excited. I had a list of questions to keep to, and instead, once we started talking, the list was out the door and the interview turned into one of the best conversations I've had in a long time. He's a great guy who just so happens to be not only the writer for that alien RPG, but he's also a franchise consultant for Fox, now 20th Century Studios, for Planet of the Apes, Predator, and Alien, which is where we'll begin. Sure. Um, uh, so. If you want to look me up, it's Andrew E.C. Gaska. Um, I um, wrote a couple of Planet of the Apes novels, and when I was doing that, it got the attention of the franchise director over at Fox, who was Josh Izzo at the time. This was uh, like 2013, I guess, 2014. Um, and uh, a couple of years after that, Josh was trying to put together some kind of franchise hub for Fox uh, for their movies. And their franchise team was confused about the timeline for Planet of the Apes. And Josh had actually read my Apes novel, which I thought was amazing because like in most of these cases, it's like hand it to an intern. Is it good? <laughs> All right, put the rubber stamp on it. Um, but Josh, um, Josh called me. He's like, hey, you know this, you know this franchise really well. You want to come and be a consultant for us? I was like, uh, let me, y yes. <laughs> I don't even <laughs> think about it. Yes. Um, so it started with Planet of the Apes, um, and then it expanded uh, to Alien and Predator. Uh, I worked on the, I worked a little bit on the Alien Bible. I didn't work as much on the Bible as I worked on the other two things because I wrote the entire Predator Bible. Oh, wow. um, and and I um, I did the timeline for Planet of the Apes, and in Planet of the Apes, the timeline is huge because. Um, it's all these different timelines that are intersecting with each other, and that's what the problem was. They couldn't figure out, like, how could this TV series and this movie be the same year if they're not blah, blah, blah? And, you know, the, the thing is, oh, they're different. They're, they're not the same canon. And I was like, ah, oh, but they can be if you do this with the timeline, because, you know, if Woody had gone to the police, none of this would have happened. And yeah, yeah. so, um, yeah, so that's, that's why I did a lot of work with that, too. And um, with Alien, um, <laughs> Alien 5 was on the table at the time. The and, um, yeah, yeah. And they said, can you look at this timeline and figure out how we can make that work and not get rid of Alien 3 and 4? Oh, I was wow. like, sure I can. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> but I just, I said, sure. And then they dropped it because they decided to move away from that. So I was like, okay, good. Because that was going to be a, a tough one to figure out. Um but, you know, so back then, uh, Scott Middlebrook was mostly working on the alien stuff back then. Um, <clears throat> and then when I worked on the Predator Bible, I wound up doing a whole bunch of updates to the alien Bible for them as well. Um, and um, somewhere around then, uh, the whole idea of the alien RPG thing came up, and uh, I wound up being writer on that. And that just led to where we are now. I guess it's a pretty lame summary of it but that's a summary so there you go <laughs> well and now outside of that you've also done work with the video game industry as well right yeah for 17 years i worked for rockstar games i worked on grand theft auto and red dead redemption and every other game that they put out from 2001 until 2017 oh wow um, what what kind of work did you do with them uh, that was that was uh, graphics work uh, that wasn't that wasn't story writing that was graphics and i I, uh, I have a degree in fine arts from the school of visual arts in manhattan i I went there. I thought I was going to be an artist. Wound up becoming a writer instead. Um, but you know, I did I did digital art and, and design for a very long time, and I still do it on the side. I work for my friends. Uh, a friend of mine has a uh, action figure company which they do it's called Dime Novel Legends, and they okay. do uh, they do like cowboys, uh, you know, but but like period accurate cowboys and and calvary from back then and stuff oh my, like that. I, I think i've heard of them now i think i saw them on a pixel dan video cool. oh, okay yeah yeah okay that's possible yeah so i uh i do all the i i do the graphic design for the card backs for that and like wow I cool. call it cgi i was on that so I, I still do that type of stuff but it's not my whole goal was to be doing more of what i'm doing with the writing i've moved in that direction writing 
the other stuff is I do it on the side now. So. Now, what about the Blam Ventures stuff? Now, that's that's your comic book. What? Yeah, Blam Ventures is my is my um, is my studio. It's a book packaging studio. Okay. What that, and I always tell people that that doesn't mean we take books and put them in boxes. <laughs> what it means is is that we 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 get the rights to do something, or we create it in house. We get it to a certain point done, and then we shop it around to find the right publisher to release it to. Okay, so that's what happened with the Planet of the Apes book. I actually, I had actually gotten the rights to do Planet of the Apes myself, uh, my, you know, through Blam. We 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 got the rights from Fox, and it was supposed to be me and two other writers that were writing it, and they wound up dropping out, and I was the only one who didn't have novel writing experience. And I was like, okay, I guess I get to find out if I can write a novel now. No. Turns out I can. So, you know, so I, I got lucky there. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so you'll see the Blam logo on a bunch of stuff, a bunch of my books, and that's because that's that means we were integral to you know making that happen. Mm. So. so, what is the official use of this work within the franchises? Like, where does it sit? It, what what's the after they have you write the like the, the alien RPG Bible or or whatnot? What, does it get applied to just the RPG or anything else? Well, it's it's interesting because it's like the stuff that I the stuff that I started with here, um, and I have a blog. Uh, uh, my Rogue Reviewer is my blog. Yep. Uh, WordPress. If you go there, you'll see I have a list of canon tiers. Mm -hmm. um, what is absolute canon? What should be considered secondary canon? And now with secondary canon, any anything but the movies, and sometimes even the movies. A hot new director could come in and say, well, I know I want the alien to always have been pink. <laughs> and okay, well, he's pink now. And it doesn't matter what canon was before because that's the canon now, okay? So there's always that element. But aside from that, that first tier is 100%, you know, the god tier of canon. Okay. The second tier is there's nothing in it that contradicts canon at all whatsoever unless somebody who's crazy in that first tier decides to write something that contradicts that second tier. Okay, that okay. makes sense. Yeah. And then once you get underneath that, then when it starts becoming a, oh, I heard that story in a bar. And uh, no, and it's like, yeah, okay, I know you like Blade Runner a lot, but it's owned by a different company, so reality check. It ain't part of Alien. I'm sorry. Yeah. I like yeah. it too. But no, it doesn't matter. When Scott says they're in the same, when, when Ridley Scott says they're in the same universe, if you watch his interview, Ridley's talking about themes. Sure. Okay, they're in the same universe of themes of androids and creation, and you know that that that's what he's talking about. To him, yeah. that's the same universe. Okay, um, so you know it's it's so much stuff, especially with the genre we're in, science fiction, um, comic books, all that stuff. You cannot just take a fact and say this is definitely this. You have to apply the context to it. Context is for kings. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, who said that? Ridley Scott said that. Ridley is talking about themes, if you listen to him, but also Ridley may have a really cool idea before the next movies come out and change what he's saying right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and it, it's 100% his prerogative to do so because he's Ridley freaking Scott. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, really, any you know, director I, could do that, couldn't they, if they're hired, you know? It, well, it depends. It's like if you have a Cameron or a Scott direct level director, yes. If you have, you know, the, the, but the guy in most cases, the right? new guy coming in, like, like like the guys who were on Solo, they tried to go too far. Okay, you know what I mean. The the, the director team that got replaced by Ron Howard, they yeah. went too far. Yeah. So you got you know, um, and where they they went so far that they were um, they were doing stuff that was going to be perceived to was well, perceived by Disney and Kasdan as damaging to the franchise. Oh. So, wow. I mean, that's why they were pulled off. You know. Okay. Uh, yeah. The creative gonna... differences is, yeah. The creative differences there is that they wanted to take it into a more comedic, uh, from what I understand, almost slapstick type way. Oh okay. wow, that would have been wrong. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it, it's un, it's not. Unfortunately, it's not unprecedented because look at Jar Jar and things like that. You know, I don't see that. I don't. I don't necessarily think that's right for Star Wars. But you know, it, whatever. It was creative differences that when you have the writer who's been around since 1980. Mm -hmm. who wrote Empire and Raiders and Jedi and all this other stuff, who's saying, hey, guys, you're going too far. <laughs> Maybe they should reel it back a little bit. Instead, yeah. they kept going. 
you know what I'm saying? So, um, so no, it's not just any director who comes in. It's any director who they're like, well, you know, he is James Cameron or he sure. is Ridley Scott. Sure. When James Cameron first came in, they were like, who's this guy? Yeah. You know, on Aliens, they were like, who's this guy? Who does he think he is? He's ruining Ridley. Ridley. So many of the interviews you see about you know, who's this pig who's screwing with Ridley's uh, vision, you know? <laughs> like, oh, no, 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 this is James Cameron. Okay, James, yes, whatever you want to. Yeah. That Alien 2 script from Cameron was in the drawer since, like, Piranha. You know, Piranha 2. It Wasn't was in it the called drawer over there. or something? Originally, he had created his personal script called that, and then someone, someone shortly after Piranha 2, someone said, you want to write an Alien 2 script? And he changed Mother into that, and then that just sat in a drawer forever. And that it wasn't until it wasn't until um, Terminator that they're like, "Oh, this guy, let's do something with him. What does he want to do?" And he's like, "Well, <laughs> I'm just sitting in a drawer." And they're like, "Oh, okay, we'll do that." So, you know, it's it's of course I'm simplifying everything, but you know, sure. it's, it's always like that. Like they they don't want they don't want you until you're famous, but nobody's gonna give you a chance to become famous. So how do you become famous? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, Scott kind of got that, but I mean, it's I think duelists. I'm just too, I'm not old enough and, and well versed enough in film to understand what Duelist was. Cause I hear that was such an amazing film that that did give him the props to get in and do what he wanted to do. Yeah. But that's because nobody gave a damn about this alien thing at the time. Sure. Nobody yeah. expected it to become anything. So that, so again, it's, and then he did something amazing with that. And then now Ridley Scott is, oh, this is the guy who turns everything into gold. You know, that, yeah. that's, that's, you know. And then you're set, and that's what Cameron did too. You know, how many how many successful films did Cameron have? Now, there's nothing he can make that people will not be like want to do. You know, so yeah. I mean, that's why we have fifteen thousand avatars coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Avatar Part Thirty Seven. Well, did you ever hear the story about him and Scott back in the day? We're gonna do an Alien Five, but oh, yeah. they canceled because of AVP. Yeah, yeah. That just blew me up. And I had to do a video on it just because of the funny things I heard about it. Like, I heard that in an interview, I don't know how serious it was, but the names of Nicolas Cage were thrown into that movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger were thrown into that movie. Like, the names that were thrown in there, and I doubt that would have happened. In the end, if you get a movie with Scott and Cameron, it's probably going to be beautiful. But Unfortunately, it wasn't. I don't know if it was because of the decision to go PG-13. I don't know, you know, what it was, but it's just, it wasn't, it, it, it to me, I don't want, I don't, I, I don't want my chocolate and my peanut butter. I want to enjoy chocolate and I want to enjoy peanut butter. So I don't, I don't want my A and my V and my P. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> I want, I, I like my alien universe. I do like AVP because like, okay, that first comic series that started it all, you mm -hmm. know, uh, back in the early nineties, that's, that's fantastic. Oh, or the late eighties, whenever it was, whenever it was. Um, early, yeah, I think. You know, that, and there, you know, there's good stuff um, out there, but it's like the films—they just didn't capture what they needed to. No. Um, it all felt like it was trying too hard. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, unfortunately, I feel that the Predator. I feel like the Alien elevates the Predator, but the Predator dumbs down the Alien. Yes. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah, the yeah. Alien just becomes fodder, kind of. It's the second nature and, and, because it doesn't think you can you can relate more to the predator. Yep, yep. Um, so you know, I don't know. I really like uh, as far as predator goes. I really like the um, the first one, obviously, but I also really like predators because I wish that they had not given away that whole thing a spoiler that it was on another planet. I wish that had not been given away in the commercial. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh god. If we were in the theater and just suddenly we're like, oh shit mm -hmm. that would have been a great moment i'm like why'd you blow this on the commercial what's wrong with you guys they no, give that's... away way too much nowadays mm -hmm. the, the the last time i had fun with the movie was was cloverfield in that aspect and not saying that the movie was that great but but i i was a one of those guys that actually did all the online arg stuff that was tied to that film it had so much stuff like fake websites made fake i mean uh -huh. it yeah no it's great more. and yet i went into that sit sitting down going People saying Voltron's going to be in this. People are saying it's a monster. <laughs> I had no idea. And I'm a kaiju guy. And I, I had to be right. like, oh my gosh, it's a monster. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want more of that. It sucks nowadays when you see early promotional shots that, sh you know, Prometheus showed the engineer in a shot really early. 
in one of the promotional shots where he was just kind of in the background in the in the uh, uh, chair room. And right. it's kind of like, oh, I don't want to see that yet. I don't want to see yeah. that. And it, yeah. I, I just wanted to have more questions going into the films, I guess, instead mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. in the trailer. But you got with, at the end of the day, we've got to stay. You know, that's that's the that's the that's the storytellers and the 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 audience in us speaking. Yeah, we have to think about this that this is a business. Yeah, okay? yeah. And it's like, okay, if we have the commercial on TV, oh, it's a predator in, in the jungle. Oh, I think I've seen this one already. Let's not go see that. Let's go see that 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 that, that new Mark Wahlberg movie instead. <laughs> the the transforming thing. Let's do that. Or Fast so, and the Furious 10 or whatever. Yes. He's fast but not that furious, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so, the, so uh, or, oh, they're in a jungle. Oh, wait, that's another planet? Oh, I'm going to go see that now. So, you know, it's like, that's why that's there. Yeah. We don't care what you think once you're in those seats. Yeah. We're going to get yeah. you in those seats. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. Um, so, I can understand both sides of it. So, it, it, it's it's a tough call, though. But, like I said, the storyteller in me and the audience in me was like, would be like, don't give it away, don't give it away, don't give it away. <laughs> but I want you to go see it, so I better give it away. <laughs> On a side note, I should probably tell everybody that accent I'm doing is my mom's accent. I talk to her today. <laughs> my mom talks like that. And I'm told, I'm like, I just realized, I've done it a lot in this video. I'm accused all the time of talk, trying, I was talking like my mother every time I get off the phone with her. So sorry about that. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> So, so okay, um, here's a question yeah. I have on that that comes off of that aspect there. Are, about my mom's you, accent? <laughs> no, no, not at all. No, oh, no. Okay. It was, I guess it was more talking about the the early films there of Alien and Aliens. There's always been yeah. to me they almost feel like two universes. Uh, I even did a video on it once. Like, do you like the Alien universe or the Aliens universe? And you get that a lot with fans of the, who's their favorite. Which which one did which one holds holds closer to you? Alien. Alien. Yeah. I mean, I love aliens. I, as somebody who has, you know, poured over the lore for this and tried to, you know, be able to define the stuff that's there already, you know, um, I get very frustrated with aliens sometimes because mm -hmm. I feel like it, it, it diminishes the creature and people are like, well, wait, but you got the queen and everything like that. And I was like, yeah, but it, they're bugs. Yeah. You know? And that's yeah. one of the things I tried to reflect in the RPG. Um, oh, it reminds me to go back to answering your question later on, uh, the, from before. Um, all right, we'll do this. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> all over the place. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. That's what you get when you're doing creatives. Um, so the um, one of the things I tried to do in the RPG to reflect this is that when there's more than three aliens together, they start to develop the hive mind. Oh, that's so awesome. they start to act. They act in a different way at yeah. that point. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you know, because I, I love, I love aliens. It's not that there's nothing bad about that movie. It's a great movie. No. Um, but I feel like it doesn't quite grasp the lore that was originally presented in the first one. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think when Ash says you can't kill it, Ash wasn't lying. Yeah. You know, um, so now you get around that with, okay, well, you know, regular rounds versus armor piercing rounds. And there's actually some evidence for that in Aliens too, because when they hit it up, light it up with the pulse rifle, boom, acid alert place. But when, um, when, when, uh, Gorman is taking his gun and shooting at the one in, in right in the, in the forehead that just popped up out of the grate, yeah. you see the bullets deflecting off of it. Uh huh. And then when she puts the gun directly under the, uh, you know, the side of the head, she's got it flush again. She's able to pierce the armor with, even though it's a regular pistol. But it's like, you know, it's harder to kill with regular weapons than it is with pulse weapons. Yeah. So, you know, there's little things you can work around to, okay, to, to make the massage just a little and make it make more sense. Mm -hmm. um, I've always loved the overmorphing thing oh. uh, for people who the don't know what that is. It's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, officially, it's over morphing. Oh, cool. Um, no, uh, that's cool to hear because I've always heard the fan base say egg morphing. So. Yeah. Well, the egg is called an overmorph. Sure. So yeah, yeah. yeah you're being transformed into overmorph. So you're overmorphing. Um, <laughs> what do you call it? The um, that is that just makes the life cycle go. Of course, now it all makes sense. You yeah. know, in that one little thing, and by cutting that out of the movie, you lose all that. Um, 
I don't even know if Cameron was aware of it when he wrote I thought, he, I thought I heard that he was, but I can't guarantee it. Okay. I mean, I know, I know when he, I know at some point in the production he found out about it and was like, well, it wasn't, it's not the final film, so who cares? Yes. No. Because yeah. back then, no one's going to think, oh, that deleted scene is going to get put back into the 2001 restoration of the film. <laughs> no. No, that didn't happen, kids. That, that That's what for you millennials. Uh, we didn't have that back in the day. Um, but, um, yeah, so it's, 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 it's tough because there's, there's nothing not to like about aliens. But I think the yeah. lore that was trying to be set up in Alien is more powerful. The 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 ovomorphine. Now I got to get used to saying ovomorphine. The, the ovomorphine is definitely more. Egg morphine still works, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, heck, I, my last video was talking about the egg from the poster, so I'm trying to to. Oh, the egg is not an egg. Spent the last week trying to talk about those two and why they went with an egg and an ovomorphine. Let's put a crack in an egg and hang it over a a, a rope net. <laughs> yeah, that's alien. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I I stared at that the cover of the novel forever. Wondering what is this? Why is this? Yeah, you know. So it it definitely gets your attention. It was like, interesting. Well, you know, and I never it. in forty years questioned it. I never once saw the movie and then said, "Why are the eggs not like that?" I'm one of those fans that's always been like, you can go forward without Sigourney Weaver, but I would still be the same guy that if the next prequel, if it ever were to come out and we get a de-aged Sigourney at the end linking it up, I would be a fanboy. I don't need it, but I mean, I don't need the link up. But I, I, I wouldn't. I guess I wouldn't hate it. You know how? What happened to the jockey? What happened to some of that stuff? But again, I don't want all the answers. That's the funny thing is that you've heard all this, like a lot of the fan base saying that that they hate the prequels because they don't want the answers. And then the same thing I'm hearing is we want all the answers. So I mean, it's the same problem with Boba Fett. Boba Fett had you know six lines in the entire original saga. And then, and that's it. Yeah. Just he says, you know, he's not good to me, Dad. You know, things like that. Little like one line. Boba Fett's so cool. <laughs> and then now we see ten year old Boba Fett, and then the prequels going like, oh, okay. Uh, I don't think I needed to know that he was a ten year old brat. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if he's cool anymore. Uh, stop what? telling me about Wolverine. I don't want to know about Wolverine. I like him as a mystery. Oh, okay. I know all about Wolverine now. Okay, he's okay. You know, it's yeah. like you got to be careful with these things. Yeah. Well, and I think that the, the the alien saga still left that open enough. That's the one thing that I do argue with people that are like, well, David's done this. And if David made it, then that's that's the end all be all. And you're like, well, no, we saw that the engineers have already created some kind of xenotype creature before David even landed. We see, see it in the murals. And I know those or, murals. Or, or, or they found it somewhere and worship it. We don't know. We don't yes, know any of those. Yes. It could still be reverse engineered. I know most of my fan base says that they want it to be found on a planet as a natural thing and that the engineers find it there and then mess with it. That's still open. That's still open that the engineers did find it. That could be where the goo came from. I know a lot of people say that, that the, the catalyst substance was a reverse engineering from, you know, an alien and, or whatnot. The, um, the thing that people need to understand about the prequels is that the only person who's told us that he's created anything is David. And David is hardly the most reliable person we've ever met. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. It, he could be full of it. It you know, and Foster has in the novel that he looked that he had looked up, you know, found a fossilized egg and was like, What the hell is this? And yeah. that was supposed to be on the set like that too. And Ridley changed that while they were shooting it. Oh, so, so is that the dissected egg, do you think? Yeah. Oh wow. That's why that egg that's where that egg comes from. That shit was supposed to be in there. And he's like, oh no, let's just leave it. Let's 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 make it like it was David. Because okay? that's a more now, traditional ovomorph, isn't it? It's not like the new the Pratomorph egg, right? The ones that you see in the room with Orum. You know how those eggs are like taller and skinnier and have longer flaps? The 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 uh Yeah, I don't I I, I, I don't want to answer that without knowing for sure because I don't want someone to be like, actually. Yeah, yeah. My <laughs> my memory though is that it it looks right. more over more. It looks more. But the whole cross section thing was because of that. Sure. Okay, that's why the thing is across, and you see it in Advent. You know. Yeah. Uh, Advent? No, not Advent. The one. What is the one where they go? Where, where they show the guys showing up later? There's that video where the guy goes in and walks around the lab looking at it, and yeah. then sees the egg, yeah. and he starts to. That was done by YouTube and Fox together. Right. So that so that's an official video. Yeah. 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 
What is that called though? What was it? it was David's David's Lab or what was it called? Yeah, something like I can't remember the exact yeah. name. I I just watched it like two days ago too. Well, I'm going to challenge your post skills. So in in post production, you're going to put the name of that video right <laughs> under our face. Right? Let's see if you pull it off or not. <laughs> it's more of if I remember it, I, I can do it. <laughs> So um, that that's in your tier of canon, though, isn't it? I think so. I think it is. Yeah, yeah. And that's um, that's cool because it doesn't really offer anything. You know, I mean, really, it's just a guy going in and getting face hugged, but it's still interesting to tell. Well, I mean, and that's the thing with stuff like that because you could also be like, I hear that some guy went into this lab and got got the thing stuck to his face. <laughs> okay. Well, where's the proof in the universe that this happened? It may or may not have happened. Okay, so is it real or not? Yeah, it's it, and and even the things. As far as I'm concerned, if you're going to play that game with the movies, you're you're really just you're making up your own rules. But sure. once you get past that first tier of canon, right? Um, if you don't like Alien Three, we have specifically I have put in the game William Gibson's Alien Three little hints. Mm-hmm. So you can go in that direction if you want instead. Okay. Um, Maybe maybe Gibson's Alien Three happened for real in your universe, and the stuff about her showing up on Fury One Six One is just someone someone said something about that in a bar, and it's not true. You know, whatever. You know, it, I'll tell you right now. As far as officially, it's the Gibson thing that's the bar story. You know, because the movie came out, guys. Okay, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. the movie. Yeah, you don't like Alien Three. I, I I'm not particularly fond of Alien Four. It happened. But it happened, you know? yeah, yeah. It's hard to you now, and I can say, I can say, but maybe the movie you saw of Alien Four was a drunk guy telling you about what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, which that goes to the, for the barroom canon idea that you right, had, which right. is just stunningly beautiful. That was the setup for this universe, um, and it's it's what you're talking about right now, definitely with the whole ideas of stories and 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 whatnot. Um, where did that come from? Is that something you've used in other canon dealings, or, or just a new idea, or what? What? Where that? I mean, it has it has its genesis in a couple of places. Um, it I came up with it, 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 and it's used here. I didn't say, oh, I saw that somewhere else. I'm gonna use it. I came up with it as far as I know. Okay, but it was inspired by a couple of things. One of which was with the Planet of the Apes fan base. Mm-hmm. Working out this timeline, okay. There's a lot of fans who believe that it's not five different lanes of time, okay. So just real quick for your viewers, Planet of the Apes in the third and fifth film, they say time is a highway with an infinite number of lanes. Change your lane, you change your destiny. Okay. Okay. So I use that hook that was in those movies to explain this screwed up all these things that have come out over the years that don't make sense to you. Okay. <laughs> And I assigned five official lanes of Planet of the Apes history. Okay. Which take, like, some of the movies take this one, this one, the TV series is this one, this leaks into this one, blah, blah, blah. Because this one event happens here, it changed this lane into this lane here, yada, 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 yada. Okay. Those first five lanes cover the entirety of the stuff that's come out that is considered canon. Okay. okay. I purposely said, Lane six to infinity is whatever you believe it is as a fan. <laughs> Make it your timeline. Sure, sure. I was like, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. I was hired to do this, and I wanted to find a way to do it that still left people at least because I know people felt strongly about this stuff. Mm-hmm. Who are you to tell us what happened in what timeline? Blah blah. I'm like, I'm the guy they hired to do it. That's, that's <laughs> I am. I mean, you know, they they literally called me and said, "Hey, we don't know what to do with this. Can you help us?" So that's the guy I am. That's it. Yeah. And because I'm a I'm a crazy nerd, and and my Planet of the Apes story, it, it, the, those novels all come out of me watching the the ABC afternoon movie um, during the week in in uh, when I was like ten years old, and realizing that there was weird continuity gaps between each film mm-hmm. and thinking, oh, there must have been another movie that they just didn't play that took place between these two. And in my head as a 10-year-old kid, I made up what must have happened in that movie for it to make sense. Sure. And that's my Planet of the Apes novels. That's my 10-year-old yeah. kid stuff. 
<laughs> no, I, I haven't read those, but I, I heard you talking about those. Now, you actually explain what happened kind of off screen for certain characters in, in those films, like even Hester. Yeah, because in between each movie, there's a huge leap of stuff that's happened each time. And some of you know, it, it ranges from a huge, crazy event to something minor, like two characters who are engaged. Now we're talking about what they're saying they're married. Okay. But we never talked about them getting married. So clearly they got married between the films. Clearly this must have happened when that happened. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. And I, I, I forgot all about Planet of the Apes and would just went, I, you know, totally. Planet of the Apes and Godzilla, I abandoned for about 15 years of my life. <laughs> and then in college, got back into them and with a fear, with a vengeance. Okay. Sure. So, but, you know, I stayed Star Wars and Star Trek the whole time. Okay. Okay. But so when I came back to Planet of the Apes, I was like, Oh, I guess I made up those other movies that I thought were real since I was ten years old. <laughs> <laughs> but my my novels are are based on those those ideas I had from when I was a kid. Um, wow! So, so these people were furious about it, and I'm like, "But I left it open for you." Well, you shouldn't have told us anything because you're not in charge, and blah blah blah. And and then it's like, "Well, who's Fox to do this? Because this has been around since the '60s and '70s, and the guys at Fox now weren't there then." <laughs> and that's blah blah blah. blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, God, guys, calm the fuck down, please. So yeah. I got the people who've read the novel either love it, the novels either love them or hate them, okay? And I've sure. got much more positive feedback than negative. So, you know, it, it's fine. But there's always that toxic fan base. Yes. And that toxic fan base is not necessarily, they're not necessarily bad guys when they start, okay? They're right. just people who, I know this question has not been answered for decades. So I've answered it in my head. Just like as a kid, I answered what happened between those two movies in them? It's true. Okay. The difference is, is that I then was a starving artist trying to make it in this industry, got lucky, was talented at what I got lucky with, got recognized, and then asked to work for the studio. Okay. I was hired to do it. That doesn't make me any special more than anyone else, except that I decided this is what I was going to do with my life. No matter how bad it got, and it, you know, we're ramen for a long time. You know, it's, 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 it's not a it's not an easy field to work in. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, one of one of my traits, for better or for worse, is that I don't like to walk away from things, which has caused me a hell of a lot of trouble in my life, and has also gotten me great things like where I am now with Alien and everything. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's who the hell I am. That's it. Just the guy they hired, sure. who wouldn't give up. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but I was like, okay, now I'm going to do this for Alien. How do I avoid this nonsense that happened with Apes? Yeah. And that's it for part one, guys. Now, we actually talked for a few hours, so I'll put together some more of our conversation for everyone to check out. Thanks for watching, take care, and I hope to see you next time.